Hi there, I'm Scott Deming. I know you're very busy and you're probably looking at a lot of speakers for your next event, so I'll be quick. Why me? Well, nearly 30 years of corporate experience, nearly 20 years on stage, leadership, culture, innovation, emotional branding, customer experience. I've got all that covered and a lot more. So please watch this brief video, go through our website and give us a call. Hopefully I'll see you soon. I had the pleasure of listening to Scott Deming speak at Walt Disney World for our Earmark Conference for travel agency owners. Of all the speakers that Disney brought in, he was by far the absolute best. Everyone at the conference agreed. And I felt like months after listening to him speak at Disney that I was still thinking about his message. And with that being said, I reached out to Scott and I asked him if he would come and speak with, to my team at Me and the Mouse. And a lot of my team still to this day reference what they learned from Scott. His ideas, his solutions, his presentation would benefit any business out there. And I'm really fortunate that our paths crossed and I look forward to working with him in the future. In the minds of everybody you're trying to appeal to, you're selling commodities. True. Now here's what we're gonna to do today in the 30 short minutes that I have, we're gonna learn how to decommoditize. How do you decommoditize? How do you become something in the mind of all these folks that are getting hit by all the other competitors? How do you become truly, truly unique? with brand distinction. Now don't get nervous, when I was talking to Claire and some of the other folks on a conference call, and I said, I'm gonna talk, you know, brand distinction, oh, we really don't wanna get into marketing. This isn't marketing. I owned and operated a national advertising agency for 20 years. I'm not talking about advertising. I'm talking about emotional branding. I'm talking about how do you create something so unique that when your name comes up, a person gets an emotional response, an emotional reaction. It's through brand distinction. And they said, what is your day-to-day -day duties. What are, your, what are your duties, what is your role as a leader, as an area general manager? I didn't hear anybody say create a vibrant, passionate culture. But I am here to tell you that all great, sustainable organizations have a culture of passion, meaning, and purpose. This doesn't mean you have to be working for a company that's trying to find a cure for cancer. It doesn't mean that. What it means is that as long as you believe with all your heart in what you do, and you have the ability to pass that on, that everybody in your organization has that same passion, that's a culture. So goes leadership, so goes culture, so goes the organization. Here's a promise, anybody know who made this? Yeah, Disney. I thought I'd throw this up here since we're here. Now, this, the happiest place on earth. Now, you know when you go through Disney, you walk around through Disney, it's magical. I mean, it is just, you bring your kids. I'll tell you how magical it is. Do you know that they have about a 75% return rate from first time visitors? Wow. That's amazing since it's really not a cheap visit. <laughs> now, you walk through the parks at Disney and you're walking around going, you know what, this is magic. It's, ma it's not magic. Do you want to know what it is? It's process. I can't tell you how excited I was to read all of the classes that you've got going on over the next few days, especially since I don't have to take part in any of them. <laughs> but what you're doing is you're creating process. Now, here's why Disney is so amazing and magical, because they know process in their sleep to the point where all they have to focus on is the magical experience. Look at that, huh? What is that? Somebody, shout it out. It's a yard sign, it's a slogan. What's that? The billboard, it's a slogan. Guess what, you know what that is? That's a promise. You know what that is? That's a promise. Can I tell you something? These are not just slogans, and you hear all the time in your franchise kits, the brand promise, and then we take it lightly, it's the advertising. Please believe me that this cannot be taken lightly. This is a promise, and if you do not keep your promise, people have way too many choices, and they're just gonna go somewhere else. Our ability to succeed in life at every single level is directly linked with our ability to create a powerful, emotional, holy cow, where did that come from, one-of-a-kind, unexpected brand? How many of you believe awareness, marketing and advertising? How many of you believe awareness builds powerful, sustainable, emotional brands? Raise your hands. All right, eh, about half the room, good, except that's not 100% correct. 
Folks, take it from me. When I had the agency, we worked with Fortune 500 companies, franchise groups, mom and pop organizations all over the country. And believe me when I tell you, awareness alone cannot build a sustainable brand. It can't. Awareness is exactly what it is. It's awareness. We're all aware of certain deadly diseases, aren't we? Does it mean we want to run out and get them? Just because people know about something, just because people know about whatever it is, doesn't mean they want it. And guess what else? Just because people know about you, what you do, how to get a hold of you, it doesn't mean they desire you. It just means they're aware of you. Nothing more, nothing less. We used to have a lot of companies driving big bucks through our agency for us to drive a lot of people into a flawed service. So we created a training program. We started showing people how to create a culture. I saw a slide up there and a gentleman said one of the most important things in our business is to create that kind of a culture where we have that employee retention. Brilliant. Because there's no possible way you can create that emotion on the outside if it's not on the inside. Do you know that every single year, Fortune, oh, I pointed there. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> what a fat ass. <laughs> the hell is this? What is that? God. Yeah. All right, what the hell happened to me? Folks. I want you to understand something. I talk about innovation, but I'm not talking about invention. I'm not asking you to try to figure out a different product to sell. Stay the course, man. You've got great stuff. You've got great stuff. I'm asking you to innovate in service. I didn't invent speaking. People have been speaking since the beginning of time. I'm innovating the speaking business. You didn't invent windows and siding and doors. I'm asking you to innovate how you sell those things. Steve Jobs didn't invent the PC, he didn't invent the tablet, he didn't invent the cellular telephone, he didn't invent retail shopping. He innovated how all those things happened and the experience we got from them. And you want to know how? Because he never said, hey, can we make a computer cool? He said this. Every time he innovated, this is the one thing he said. How can we change the world? And the one thing you want to ask yourself every single time a customer walks into your place is this. How can we change their world? You know, an invention only becomes an innovation when it becomes a product or a service that changes people's lives. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. I'm asking you to start looking at your business from the perspective and the perception of your customers. This one team, one brand, one company, one GNC is extremely critical for you to understand. I'll tell you why. If I have a poor experience at a GNC in Syracuse, New York, and I'm traveling and I need some vitamins, you better believe I'm not going to go to GNC in Las Vegas. Your brand equals your brand equals your brand equals your brand, and on and on and on. One brand. One brand. You saw a lot of wonderful vignettes. And one of the ones that I saw, which I thought was really kind of telling, was a gentleman named Alan Schlangenbach, or whatever his name is. He seems to know a whole lot about a whole lot of stuff, doesn't he? <laughs> I just may consult with this young man. Alan said this, you're okay, I like you. He said, I like you, but you know what? You haven't blown me away. He said, what you've done is you've managed my expectations. You've managed my expectations. Here's a definition of customer satisfaction. Here it is. I have an expectation. For whatever reason, you have called me, you have advertised, I've heard it from other people. I have an expectation of what it is you as Delta Airlines is going to do for me. Now, you can go bam and hit it here, bam and hit it there, or bam and nail it, and actually hit my expectation. You know what you just did? You made me a satisfied customer. If you have anywhere, anywhere in your corporate mantra that your mission is 100% customer satisfaction, get rid of it. Get rid of it. If you think satisfying a customer is where you need to be, get rid of it. If it permeates through your company, you're not going to make it, and I'll tell you why. There is absolutely no correlation between a satisfied customer and a loyal customer. None. Here's the definition of a satisfied customer. You know what it is? They'll stay with you till the next best deal comes along. That's it. 
You know what a satisfied employee will do? They'll stay with you until the next best offer comes along. You want to get them from satisfied to loyal. How do you do it? You shatter their expectation. But here's the question. How in the world do you shatter my expectation, let alone even meet it, if you don't know what it is? Here's a conversation nobody ever has with customers. Tell me something, sir, ma'am. What is your expectation of us? What do you mean? What are you expecting out of being a customer of ours, this relationship? Wow, nobody's ever asked me that before. Well, tell us. And then after you get some of this feedback, put it together and have a staff meeting and say, this is generally what people are expecting. Let's put a process together that blows those expectations away. Now what you're doing is you're taking people from satisfied crossing that abyss over to loyal. And the last thing I'll say, whether Scott is in person or virtual, uh, the ratings he gets from his audience are extremely high. Uh, that's very consistent and something that I've learned we can count on. Thank you, True Value. God bless. Thank you. Thank you very much. I love you guys, and I appreciate you having me back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.